Uh, and this section we're going to focus on, on tech. And in a moment, David Hardoon, who's special advisor at MAS, will make some opening remarks. Originally, as I said earlier, he was down to do a presentation, but we had a terrific conversation last night, and he's decided to part from script. So whenever uh, an AI expert and regulator decides to go off piste, it's going to be interesting. So uh, David will start the session. He's then going to join myself and two of the most prominent disruptors in fintech in a panel discussion, and that's Ripple and Revolut. Very pleased to have them here. After that, we're going to shift gears pretty quickly, and we're going to look at unlocking Asia's digital economy. We're going to be speaking to Google, the Color Pack, Accenture, Pfizer, and also Tigra Investments, a big investor in tech. So fascinating conversation. But first, to get us underway, my great pleasure to welcome to the stage David Hardoon from MAS. Well, green, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. It's an absolute pleasure to be here today. Now, I was originally asked to talk about AI developments. Uh, however, uh, I guess in the theme of agile innovation and perhaps the drinks of a reception, decided to chuck that out and talk a bit more within the construct of some of the things that I'm also personally, well, not just concerned, but intrigued about within the developments that are happening in AI, within the themes of trade. Now, before I begin, I, I always feel a degree of obligation to kind of remind everyone that I, I like to refer to AI in a very ubiquitous sense, because it does refer to many things. And you talk to 10 different people, you may get 15 different answers on what it really is. So from be it robotic automation, the use MIS reporting, analysis, all the way to machines that are learning based on data automatically via cognitive aspects. So I just want to give that underlying caveat. But at the end of the day, whatever it may be, there's a rationale and there's a reason for why we want to use AI. We want to assure that it is operational, sustainable, and recently I like to use the word trusted, AI algorithms which can be used within an organization. <clears throat> but all of these need to be situated in aspects. And I'd like to talk about two key aspects from that point of view, trade and governance. Now, naturally governance, because I do come from the regulator. From the trade point of view, and it's interesting because I was checking this last night to just make sure I don't say anything silly uh, on what trade is. And, you know, the buy and the sale, an exchange of something. And I'm not quite sure what dictionary I was looking at because in Brexit it says usually insults. But, okay. We need to truly remember that AI, all these possibilities that we are trying to achieve, we are aspiring to achieve, this digital economy that is situated on these underlying services, and I can continue with the underlying catchphrases from services inclusion and that's far, is based on data. And that data means connectivity. Now, this was mentioned several times today, Minister Iswaran, the panel, but I really wanted to delve on this in a bit more detail because of its criticality for the facilitation of trade. There is a growing trend globally that concerns, and we should all be concerned about, which is about localization of data. And I was thinking earlier of giving you a very concrete illustration of what that means within the context of AI. Imagine, a, well, I used to have pen pals, you know, so writing to strangers. Whether you're writing a letter to a stranger, your partner, a friend, or whatnot. Now imagine a scenario where you wrote that letter, you go to the postal office, and they say to you, we can send the envelope. We can't send the letter. You have to go there in person. That's what it means by localizing data. Be it on a cross-border perspective or even, let's be a bit more pragmatic within an organization. Now, I, I like to think about the rationale as why they're driving and how we need to collectively think about this. Be it as regulators, from a, a governmental point of view, sovereigns, or all the way to corporations. Data largely was collected because, quite frankly, regulators demanded for you to collect it. And now it has become, to a certain extent, an asset that's still not well defined. And I fully agree with Minister's point earlier that we actually need to stop referring it to oil because it elicits this emotive response of, I need to keep it as close as possible to me. To be able to provide those services, to be able to provide personalization, to be able to understand behavior of corporations, organizations, individuals, that these things can be facilitated on, we need to understand the data that's happening. And locking it down in the realm of globalization means that we cannot. It means that suddenly David in Singapore is not the David in the UK, is not the David in the US. A company suddenly becomes fragmented. But it goes beyond just the services that I want to receive. It's about risk. 
Now imagine a scenario that we're asking organizations, as we do, to tell us the risk that you're exposing yourself. and say, sorry, I can't actually see what's happening there because I'm not allowed to touch the data. Risk becomes fragmented. It's on a true perspective. All the way going down to, naturally, also cost that can get defrayed. So I wanted to emphasize this point and give those explicit illustrations about what does it mean to have a data localization. So, as mentioned earlier, there's quite an extensive activities to assuring data uh, elect um, um, uh, DEAs, as we mentioned earlier, as well as data connectivities. Now, on top of that, I just wanted to illustrate that, of course, there's a various considerations about privacy and security. But these should be hygiene. And we have already been seeing quite a number, on top of the various agreements and elevations of trade agreements, to having, looking at technological solutions that is able to achieve those degrees of privacy, security, and whatnot, while attaining the outcome that you're interested in. Now, on the topic of privacy, I wanted to add one more thing, which is also in the theme of interoperability. In the end of the day, remember what AI is. It's an outcome, it's a usage, it's an understanding of insight from that data. And again, it is behavioral. It is also representative of different behaviors, culturally different behaviors. There's a large discussion on AI ethics about privacy. Now, these are important components. And as we're going about creating policies, understanding various uh, uh, requirements with respect to uh, well, the governance on top of it, the privacy, and so forth, we need to think concretely on how do we assure interoperability. And by interoperability, I don't mean, well, we can all enjoy the cake, but you have to follow my recipe. It is in terms of how can we assure that the differences, for example, in ownership of data as the European perspective, GDPR, with the Chinese one. And this is not a matter of right or wrong. I'll be the last person to say that. But it's how do we allow the trade? How do we allow for transactions, services, that adheres to these differences? And this is a difficult question, which quite frankly, I do not have an answer quite yet. But we need to think about it on top of assuring that we allow for data to flow across, uh, across world and across sometimes organizations as well. So that's on the trade side of the house. And I want to spend a few more minutes to talk about governance. Because this is also a vantage point and a view from MAS, but I believe it's truly one that should be done globally. There's a misnomer that governance or regulation stifles innovation, prevents it. Having, and I haven't been a regulator to start with, been in a regular for long enough now, I couldn't disagree more with this point of view. Governance and regulation fundamentally is to assure a safeguarding of multiple layers. It allows for innovation. It allows for, safe, for, for, for possibilities and experimentation. Now, with that, when we're thinking about the feasibilities of AI and the developments in the realm, there's all the converse about we need new governance and new regulations with respect to AI, with respect to data. Now, I come from the world of AI. I come from the world of machine learning. And the first question I ask, well, yes, there may be new risks, do not get me wrong. But the first question we need to ask ourselves is, do we really need new governance? Do we really need new committees, new councils, new perspectives? Or it is, in fact, the exact same risks, the exact same procedures that we're currently experiencing, but there's an AI algorithm running in the back end of it. And how do we accommodate for it? And if there are, how do we take a calmer, pragmatic approach towards it? A very common theme that pops up is discrimination, but quite frankly, it has always been there. There is nothing new with the introduction of AI towards it. So what I wanted to, because talking about AI developments, and I could have spent some time talking about and all these wonderful applications been done, but quite frankly, they're out there. The feasibility and the possibility of using it is already proven. The conversations and the panels already elucidate on some of those aspects, and also the ambitions that are out there. We need to make sure that we don't wake up into a world whereby we suddenly realize that the very basic things that we want that are situated on the feasibility of AI and data are no longer there possible because of misconceptions. To achieve security or privacy, I need to prevent something, which then fundamentally means all the things that we want from a digital economy cannot happen. Equally, we don't make things overcomplicated before we begin. 
from a governance perspective, from a regulatory point of view, taking a pragmatic approach towards it. Just to share briefly before I conclude and we move to the panel, on those lines, uh, this was last year uh, during our FinTech Festival, which you're welcome to next week, we introduced FEET. Other than really enjoying the pun in the word, it was a fairness, ethics, accountability, and transparency. It was us saying as a regulator to the industry in, in conjunction with the industry working together, let us understand what does it mean to use AI? What does it truly mean to use data within a financial institutions? But quite frankly, it's applicable to all industries. Rather than jumping the gun and saying, this is the policy, this is my viewpoint. And taking that incremental approach, it's a starting point. It is not perfect, I'll be the first one to say. But it gives us that roadmap in how we can continue effectively. So with that and the time that I've been allocated, thank you very much.